Thank you so much, sir. It's indeed an honor to be chaired by mentors and uh, humbling to talk here, especially with Dr. Rishi Shukla. Everyone here is a mentor who I've learned from. So I am going to take a different um, style because sir has already sent, gave, you know, made us very emotional and very um, the difficulties and the solutions which are very, very subjective. As Prasanna sir just said that every child has a challenge, there is an individual solution. So one case, one solution, which we know how much energy at a personal level, every caregiver, every doctor, every team uh, has to invest to be able to give optimum care to a single child, whether it is in rose limited or resource uh, you know, a well situation. But now I'm going to talk about something very, uh, uh, you know, very fixed, very something which is reproducible, something which is uh, very basic actually here, and that is access to care in developing countries. So we know, and this is what we see every day, both sides are my own children with uh, type 1 diabetes, and one has a very loving, caring family. And they are using a, a CGMS, a pump now, everything. And the other comes from a village, has so many issues and just cannot afford even the transport, let alone uh, having any kind of technology. So we have this kind of a disparity in a country. So since we were talking about this developing countries, and this is a SPAD forum where this is not just India, but all the developing countries. So we just as by definition, I just wanted to get that picture right. How big is our problem? And we are talking about 152 developing countries in the world. So it's not just us. It's like 152 developing countries. And that's a population of 6.69 billion. So whatever problem we are talking about actually reaches out to everyone. So this is practically almost a whole of Africa, Central South America, all Asian com uh, countries and even some other countries in the northern uh, continents as well. So this is 85.33% of pop proportion of the world's population. And if 85.3% of the world's population falls under this developing country uh, criteria, then it is really a, a kind of a eye-opener that whatever solution I can find sitting anywhere, for example, if I'm in Aurangabad here, can actually be reproduced or taken to rest of the world. Or we can get a solution from Africa or Asia or anywhere. So that with that thought, I have kept this um, topic on that track. And so developing countries can be divided into low-income countries, lower-middle-income countries, upper-middle-income countries, and high-income countries within the developing countries as well. India is probably an aggregation of all. So if you, it's like the elephant and any side you see of India and you will have all four. So if you see a clinic and say, oh no, children are, are like in such a bad, there's food scarcity at one end and there is absolute lack of access of infrastructure at one end. The other end, you would have actually a good service even for example uh, as Sujoy, Dr. Sujoy Ghosh was telling us so in Bengal maybe you would have now access to care even a government hospital okay it took time it's there but it's available so we are a aggregation of all kinds of uh, settings now we have talked about it in the inaugural ceremony also this was very well emphasized by all our uh, dignitaries and Dr. Shukla has so beautifully expressed it in context of a child. So we know all the challenges now, insulin affordability and accessibility, not just affordability, accessibility. Accessibility was seen even more clearly, the lack of accessibility was experienced during the COVID times, because often the children who used to get free insulin from a NGO or from a center, when they were actually trying to buy it in their village, some of the insulins were not accessible. The only insulin that was housed by a local pharmacy in a village was a premix insulin, which is not what we wanted our child to take. So accessibility is still a problem even in a country like India. Monitoring affordability and accessibility in the entire spectrum, whether we are talking about a strip, I think the lowest cost strip in India today, you cannot get around six to eight rupees, but even that is expensive, the kind of uh, monitoring we want, all the way to continuous glucose monitoring system. But 
it is tough. Diabetes education team creation and access, and um, I mean, one can speak volumes and volumes on that. So those are definitely access which is not there. For ex that is what Dr. Shukla was also trying to emphasize that if we keep on, if we have free insulin and we have free monitoring, and yet we do not have diabetes education, what are they going to do with it? And who is going to educate? So we need a team. We need people to be trained. So this entire access to diabetes education is another challenge. Again, doctor's awareness and skill is a big challenge as we were so that uh, through RSSDI when we were trying even uh, it was, it's difficult. I mean, we did reach out, but there are still lots and lots and lots of doctors. I mean, to the last mile, I'm very sure we have a long way to go where we can reach where people give actually uh, at least a physiological care is what we were talking about. Now, special care is only at tertiary center. But very interestingly, this time I was very uh, fortunate to be part of the low resource setting guidelines, which came out for the first time. Earlier, it was an appendix in one of the guidelines. And this time there was a full chapter that will be coming out soon and for ISPAD. And that opened up our eyes because we were 12 doctors there. And uh, Dr. Lena, who was there present today in the morning, was the one who was our, you know, trying to get all the size together. And we did not have the same kind of challenge. The, there was food scarcity in places in Africa. There was a migrant population uh, problems there. There were wars driven area and so many more kind of scarcities, which are not just about uh, monitoring or insulin or diabetes education. So challenges are um, endless and we are now very well aware of them. Now, the main thing is what are we doing about it? And the whole, the very fact that whoever is logged in today is passionate about type 1 diabetes. All the, uh, you know, including our chairpersons are the mentors who have spent their life working in type 1 diabetes. And that is why we are where we are today, that at least something is happening. So we can do something personally, we can do something community driven, it can be an NGO driven, as we do with Uran. It can be a local medical organization driven. It can be a national medical organization driven, as in RSSDI, as in this program. It's a global organization driven, as in SPAD. It can be a policy at a state level, as Dr. Sujoy Ghosh showed us today, that they have been. And there are some states in the country who have actually made insulin available. But which insulin? Is it basal polish? Is it... Uh, Monitoring along with it, are glucometers also available, are strips also available, is diabetes education also available. And ultimately what we are looking at as a national policy so that it can reach the far end of the HBNC, uh, of a PHC. Now, I am just saying, what are we asking for? I am do using this platform of access to care as a kind of a shakeup to all of us. When we speak to our leaders, when we speak to our media, when we ask for something, what do we ask for? What is our minimum level of care? So access to care, there was so much discussion amongst us that when there is no food, how can we ask for basal bonus insulin? But if we today say, okay, there is lack of food and we ask for the minimum kind of a insulin, say premix insulin, that policy will never change. If there is not a goal setting, which is physiological, good for the children, uh, how will be an aspiration set for it? How will be a policy set for it? So are we really looking at survival? So many studies have been shown in this forum itself that what will happen if we do not treat optimally? So what happens to these children? So uh, my point here is that when we are asking access to care, should we ask for access, which is not so-called a minimal access to care, at least a comprehensive care, even if it is about not affording anything else, yet even a child in the remotest of village with lowest of literacy can learn. This was his SPAD 2018 and Dr. Banshi, I mean, this is Dr. Anju, Dr. Banshi, and we it had come to Hyderabad. These are the children of Udan who had traveled. They're seen for the bus, for the uh, train for the first time. They'd seen a hotel for the first time. They had seen white skin for the first time when they saw all the, and the way they performed. And today, if, four years later, if we follow them up, just that spark that they could get care, they could get inspired. They are doing well. These are very, very low resource setting children. So my point again is that uh, 
there's a lot of thought about compromising. So my thought today is access to care, yes, but access to good care. Because we were talking to everyone in Thailand and Pakistan and Africa. And ultimately, there were so many stories. Everyone had a story. Uh, sob story, we all see them. But we all felt across the globe that our policymakers need to hear something beyond that. And because for so many years we didn't have uh, numbers, so I'm really grateful to Priya and JDRF and LFAC and ISPAD for all the support and work that came in the form of Type 1 Index. So I'm just quoting this from the type1index.org for India Index. So why should we lose so many children? What was needed? Just one extra strip would give three hours of life expectancy. That is a kind of um, calculation that has been done. So uh, why not go one level up when it comes to access of care? So we do have challenges, I agree. But if we want to ask for something, let us ask for a standard of care, even for the lowest resource setting child. If we say that they cannot do it, it's our failure. Even the most illiterate, even in the most um, extreme negative setting of society, it is possible if at least one aspect is taken care of. And that is there is access. So access of care, we are talking about access to medical care as well as education and as ultimately we're also talking about the ecosystem when will that happen when there is so much talk about it that it becomes a very casual thing right i mean i often give examples for example wearing a skirt i mean long back a girl walking in a skirt would be people raising their eyes about it and today that's not going to happen because they've seen it so many times that it no longer raises any kind of eyebrows so type 1 diabetes would get accepted in society if we are talking about it at every level if the policy makers are on place and we are only talking about optimal care if I, by optimal care i'm not talking about pumps and i'm not talking about cgms but at least physiological insulin good monitoring systems of Available, access to diabetes care wherever. We have Asha, Wari, Asha workers, we have Anganwari workers. So much can happen if the uh, recommendation is very precise and if the recommendation is not suboptimal. And that is the point I wish to make because this is one of the data that comes from the Type 1 Diabetes Index and Dr. Graham is going to take us through it tomorrow in great detail and it's really fascinating that just going from a minimal care to a intermediate care can actually mean saving 5 lakh lives by 2040 and again improving the quality of life and actual life of the ones who are existing so if we compromise as physicians if we do not shout at rooftops for optimal care or better care if we do not influence our policy makers to to make that access of care not just anything because for example i went to the government medical college in aurangabad and uh, i thought they will help me and that is why I went. And what happened was the reverse. Every child who came with type 1 diabetes, they said, okay, you go to Udad. And we ended up supporting every child there. So uh, this works because there was no access to so many things. And now we are working. We are very inspired by Dr. Sujoy's model and what is happening in Gujarat to make a partnership model where Udan can work with the government hospital. But that's just one clinic, right? We need to make it across the country. So a nation, I know there's, we have lots of challenges. If there's a small country, India, I'm sure can afford it. But if we are talking about even a small African country, everyone spends on infrastructure. Everyone spends on wars. You're always willing, willing to spend on tanks and bombs and whatever war is something people are spending on. People are focusing on education because it comes under the UNICEF programs, etc., People are even spending such a lot of money to uh, save their animals. All the endangered animals in the remotest of countries, there's a program, there is funding, and animals are being saved from being extinct. But we cannot do that, a fraction of that for our children. So why not these children, these parents from villages who have type 1 diabetes? It's not that expensive. The numbers are not that big in the bigger picture of Indian population or in any country. So again, I go back to saying that, yes, we were talking about the Global Diabetes Compact and this 
because it's a centenary year of insulin, it was the it was launched with the World Health Assembly resolution saying that the reducing the burden of non-communicable diseases through strengthening prevention and control of diabetes. And this is due to the policy window of centenary of insulin's discovery. So I think that gave a spotlight to type 1 diabetes because there was a, so much talk of, uh, uh, you know, insulin. And that brought the focus on type 1 diabetes. But whatever it brought it there, we are just very grateful. But again, we have to be shouting at rooftops about the policy window, not only just access of global access of insulin, which is inequal. But what will we do with just that? We need monitoring supplies. We need all kinds of healthcare systems. We need resources for people to the last mile, including education and including an environment which is enabling. I know it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a huge utopian dream that will happen. But it has happened, right? Today, have you have a special place for all the special children in the world. It's an inclusive society. You have the third gender, which is included in all the programs. You have every kind of inclusion today. If one has to be born, this is probably the first best time in the era to be born because uh, there is no discrimination. Supposedly, there's no discrimination legally, officially, by law, by humanitarian law. So again, re-emphasizing the point that yes, we have a very poor access to care, holistic care in the global scenario of, of all uh, countries which are low resourced or developing countries, including India. But let us not compromise in our demands. Let us not compromise by saying only insulin is okay or only one strip or two strip is okay or something, something. No, we want the whole package and we want it for everyone. If we stick to our guns at all levels and everyone does it one day, this dream is also going to be true. So a little child, no matter where they come from, this little child's dream was to have Pani Puri. And it came true because he was on basal bolus and he could bolus and then have the Pani Puri. So a dream can be as small as this to a big dreams that children and young people with type 1 diabetes can today dream of. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.